John in Pasadena, home of the Rose Parade. Is yeah, it surely is. Which Terry insists on watching every year. It's kind of fun. There's a lot of cool bands and these big giant floats full of flowers. Amazing. Um, he writes to me and he says, Paul, I run a tube preamp and I've got these little silicon rings slipped over the tubes and they're called tube dampers. Yep, I'm certainly familiar with them. They're supposed to control microphonics and vibration and some folks claim they tighten the bass and clean up the treble. I like the way they look, but I'm not sure if I really hear a difference. So I have to ask, is this real or is it just audiophile voodoo and snake oil? <laughs> Can these tube dampers actually improve sound quality in a meaningful way? Or is it just another tweak that plays more to our imagination than our ears? Well, okay, let's start with, well, you already said what they did they damp vibrations. Now, first question, are vacuum tubes prone to vibration? And the answer is yes. They are microphonic. You can go up and tick, 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 tap a vacuum tube and you'll hear it in the speakers. And depending on where it is in the circuit, obviously, you do that to a transistor, nothing, because they are not microphonic. So yes, Vacuum tubes are microphonic, and if you think about how they're built, right, it's a mechanical contraption inside of a glass envelope with a vacuum inside. Vacuum tube. The tube is the glass enclosure, the bottle, and the vacuum, you have to have all the air out of it, or like a light bulb, it will just burn up. So you've got three elements to it, which is the, um, I, I, there's a number of names for it, filaments, but at the end of the day, I call them heaters. So at the bottom, the, the, uh, the heater, there's a, an element that heats up, and that's what this starts this glow of this tube, is heating it up, and it starts boiling electrons. And as these electrons boil, they're looking for somewhere to go. We have a fly swatter-ish in the middle. So if you, if you look at this tube, here, here's your boiling electrons here in the bottom. In the middle, you've got this thing called a grid, which is like a fly swatter. And then up at the top, you've got a plate. And the plate is where your high voltage is. Down here, you've got lower voltage boiling electrons, right? And as you put a voltage into the middle part, the grid, it attracts those electrons and they start flowing up and they're headed to the plate. And that makes the current flow up and down. And depending on, on, on the, the voltage going up and down as a sine wave, right? Well, all this contraption is microphonic because of all the mechanical bits and pieces in there. If they move, if they change, that can be something audible, which is what we mean when we say microphonic. So. A tube damper will help damp that out. And yes, it's probably a good idea. How much of it do you actually hear? How much of a difference does it make? You know, as I've said before, much depends on how resolving your system is, what you're listening to. If you're listening to the 1812 Overture, you're not going to hear any difference whatsoever. I mean, come on. A big piece of music you're not going to hear. But if you're listening to a delicate piece of music with lots of space in the music, I could very easily see that you would hear a difference. Now, the problem with that is in the spaces, in the quiet music where you can hear those, you're not getting a lot of vibration. And when you do get a lot of vibration, <laughs> when the music's loud, you're likely not going to hear the microphonics because they're a very small thing. So it may just be something that makes you feel good. But hey, they're cheap. It can't hurt anything. And it's definitely not snake oil. So we'll call it good at that. Okay? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.